one. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. After an exciting match between the Tigers of Mizzou and the Blue Jays of Crane, Mizzou is crowned this year's Midwest Regional Championships and runner-up from hometown favorite Creighton. Seller game, but this weekend is not over until these two team plays and it's gonna be lit. Let me tell you something. This may not be the championship game, but there is a lot at stake. Both these teams are fighting for the last, no, last national bid from the Midwest region. 13 college teams have gathered this weekend in Nebraska to secure one of seven national bids. Quidge is being played across the nation, broken up into different regions, and only so many teams are given the privilege to compete next year, 2020 April in West Virginia. I want to say Charleston, is that right? I think so. Charleston, West Virginia should be a good time. The best of the best will compete there next year some in April, 2020. Some say that West Virginia is almost heaven. <laughs> The last bid will be fought between Chicago's Columbia Renegades to the left here. And then on our right, Southern Illinois University Edwardsville, the Cougars. It looks like the refs are gonna let these teams compete in the jerseys that they are playing in. Every now and again, you would have seen some of the teams wearing purple pennies and it's usually been involving the teams that are playing in red. Seems like the refs feel confident that these jerseys will not be too mixed up when it comes to the calls and refing as accurately as possible. It looks like Alec Powers from Chicago United will head ref this contest and be supported by Creighton and Quidditch. And it looks like the head coach from Mizzou, Aaron, and I am not surprised Matt Mellon is looks like he's going to snitch this one. Matt Mellon is a chaser for Boom Train Quidditch, another Midwest club team. Um, Scotty go snitch. <laughs> Scotty go snitch. Too old for that. That that's why we put the young buck out there. Matt Mellon's going to snitch. You're getting surgery on Wednesday, so any damage you do will be fixed. I mean, you're not wrong. Surgery is Wednesday, but I really don't feel like running right now. I'm, I'm in like casual like Levi's. I ain't, I ain't gonna go run right now. Um, I have three pairs of shorts in here. I don't know what I'll snitch. Go do it. I've snitched once at a fantasy tournament. My time was five seconds. I don't know if they're gonna do the game clock again. I hope they do be very appreciated but for the most part they've at least been doing the score the score table has a flip score and then the digital thing in the top right um, has um, also been provided score very nice change of pace uh, wait just got a message coming in that is a good question we did chat with peachy in between games not as bad as it appears it sounds like he was given the clear to play see so we will see how many minutes peachy will log in for columbia but that is a good question a huge piece to that offense like if you guys really want to just like start putting stuff in the car Giving some feedback to my entourage here on we we trying to leave here ASAP. It'll be a long ride back home to Chicago. Renegades are getting hyped for this final match. A stellar story out of the Chicago area. Young team, second year, competing in Midwest Regionals. Shocking all weekend. 
to be in this position. No, not too many folks saw this coming, but they have continued to grow and progress all season long, having tons of practices and competing with them all year. They have a good shot. However, nothing in life is guaranteed, and the only thing stopping the Renegades shot at the last bid is this talented group of athletes from Edwardsville, the Cougars. I'm not going to lie, a disappointing day one for these guys. A lot of losses, uncharacteristic of Edwardsville. Rallied, got their stuff together. Fought tooth and nail to get to this match to secure their national bid. Truthfully, it could be anyone's game. Like just watching both these teams play all weekend, trying to keep my Chicago bias in check. Either one of these teams can walk away and it should be a good game expected. Gain some support for Columbia's number 22. There he is, number 22 for Columbia. Getting some support for the Cougars. Alec will head ref, supported by Mizzou's head coach, Aaron. And the rest of the ref crew will consist of players from Creighton College. KPEC is field managing. SIUE gets there first. Fast start. Just stripped. That's number 88. The shot is good by number 88. Gets it on the second attempt. The Cougars strike for 10-0. The strip came from keeper number two for the Renegades. That is Schmitty. See how the Renegades will answer back. Those tuning in late, final bid match between the Columbia Renegades and the Edwardsville Cougars from Southern Illinois. Not to be mixed up with the Slukies from Carbondale, they just both live in Southern Illinois. Quaffles in the hands of Nico, number eight. Kick gets the pass off, blocked. Keeper ball, number 77, will handle the quaffle for Edwardsville Cougars. Ooh, missed beat opportunity for Columbia. Blocked, recovered by the keeper. Schmitty, number two for Columbia. Hands it off to Nico. Black beater, beat, number 69, Payton. Edwardsville maintains bludger control, getting a lot of pressure up front. Sh Schmitty gets beat before the score attempt. Quaffle will go to the keeper for Edwardsville. Appreciate the support and live commentary, or sorry, the, the commentary from you all. Two good college teams, a great game to be had for sure. Cougars remain up 10-0 over the Renegades. Some slow ball play from the Cougars. Slow ball just refers to the tempo. Blocked by number 22, blocked again. Blocked. The reaction by number 22, Chaser for the Renegades. Phenomenal. Big hit by the keeper. Keepers are going at it. Nico takes the quaffle. Turnaround beat by number seven. Oh my goodness. 
beater, number seven, accidentally takes out their own player. You hate to see any injury, but you definitely hate to take out your own player. She gets up, probably a little shooken up. Dude's got a cannon for only being 100 pounds soaking wet, but we'll, we'll see if she's okay. She might have to come out for a, a concussion protocol. Concussions are no joke in any sport. Hand injuries, heavily researched in other contact sports, especially football. Concussions are not something to mess around with. So she's going to step out, probably do the concussion protocol with the medical staff, and then if she's good to go, she's good to go, and she'll be back at right out. Game is tied to 10. Game time is 2.37. Hey, Gabe, do you want me to drive first or are you driving first? I'll do whatever you want me to do. I can provide live, live commentary on the drive back home. Kicks it out to number 88. Being patient, cautious. Blocked by Nico, chaser for Columbia. Huge stop. The hoop defense continues to do wonders for this renegade team. Shooters got to shoot, but it's hard to shoot through a brick wall. Schmitty, number two, will cross the midline with the quaffle. Spin move. Pump fake. Beat. They called it clear. Maybe that was for someone else. Number 12, Alley has the quaffle. Passes. Deflected and picked off by the chaser. Hands off to the keeper. Not being slowed down. Another strip. I don't know what 22's got into his fingers, but they are magical, getting strips all day. I guess that's why he seeks for this team too. Stellar defense by the Renegades. 22's got magic fingers getting a couple strips early on in this match. Media pressure by number 88 from the Cougars. Beat. <laughs> Edwardsville is not giving this Renegade team any room to breathe. And last time I checked, breathing is good for you. Clear. Pump fake. Score is good by number two, Schmitty, the keeper for the Renegades. Takes the lead, 2010. Time is 426. David will sub in for the Renegades at Chaser, number 97. Classic Schmitty. Uh, Schmitty does a lot of things really well, and he does them with style. Miss beat by Payton. Score is good by Edwardsville. Miss beater opportunity by the Renegades beating their own player on accident. Cougars respond back, tying it up two to two. Renegades have bludger control. That's a good thing. Let's see how they use it. Solid beat off camera by Riley for Renegades. Shot is good by Schmitty, number two for the Renegades. 30, 20. We did talk to Columbia's number 23, Ben Peachy, earlier after their game. He reported that he was given the okay and he's clear he's good to go. Currently he's on the sidelines in a hoodie and sweatpants. He, he, he said he's not playing this game. Scotty out for the whole game. Out for the whole game? That's what he said. Okay. So maybe what was reported previously was not the case. Peachy will be out for this game for the Renegades. And as discussed previously, that is huge for this team. Big part of the morale of this team. Huge part of the offense and defense. Can't replace a Ben Peachy, but... It's gonna be that next man up mentality, our next player up mentality. And this is the next man up. 
Third goal for Schmitty for Columbia and does it with neck contact. Card. Yellow card on the Edwardsville. Uh, who is that? The chaser, the keeper. It's one of those two. But I think because. Edwardsville keeper neck contact. The keeper? But he doesn't come out, right, because the goal negates the penalty. Yeah, there you go. Um, so the, the penalty will be awarded against um, the Cougars, but because the goal was good, it negates the penalty. Schmidt has been balling all weekend, enduring a couple of injuries from day one. Uh, he's got his right knee wrapped up. I know that's kind of been bothering him the, the last couple of years he's been playing. Um, but doesn't appear to be slowing down anytime soon. Leading the charge for this Renegades offense. Score is 40 to 20. Game time is 6 minutes, 23 seconds. The implication of this match are the final bid for the Midwest region. Winner take all. Matt Coyle, huge Columbia fan, supporter, and player. Been balling since day one. I believe it. Columbia in that hoop zone. They are not looking for high fives. This is just part of their defense. Columbia has bludger control. The shot is good by Edwardsville. That is number 88 for the Cougars. Cutting the, the lead. Ooh, what a beat by number five. Look at that onslaught of Renegades. It is clear. Schmitty driving. Pump fake. Scores again for the Renegades. This man is not slowing down. Not sure how or when, but Columbia regained bludgeon control. Number 15, Cougars kicks it out. The chaser, number eight? 88, thank you. Pass to 12. Sidelines letting them know they have one. That means they have one bludger beater on defense. Alley's wide open for the, the Renegades, number 12. Stoppage of play by Alec Powers. The score is 60 to 30. Game time is eight minutes, 15 seconds. The goal is good by Alley, number 12. Does anyone have Schmitty's chiropractor on call? <laughs> um, is that is that chiropractor in Chicago? Because it's going to be a minute before they get here. Oh, uh, wait, I see what you're getting at because he's making a point of team on his back reference. I'm I'm slow. I got it now. That, that was clever, Matt. You got me. Normally, normally it would be Schmitty and Peachy, but uh, as Peachy is out, Schmitty... Dude, is, uh, like, a lot of these Renegades have been balling. Schmitty, Peachy, Nico, Ali. Matt got jokes. Or if you're Scotty, hop in my 17 separate bags. <laughs> Leave my bags out of this. <laughs> my bags are great. They give me power. And, and wealth, because they don't cost a lot. Yeah, but the items that you use is... <laughs> Al Powers calling a contact from behind call. Players will remount and resume play. Keeper for Edwardsville, number 15. We'll walk the quaffle up. 
Alec Powers is the head ref, joined by LER Aaron from Mizzou, and Crane is providing the rest of the ref crew. Snitch is chilling on the sidelines with his nice hat. Put your hands up, playing my song. No, no one's thinking of that when the Renegades are on defense. Quaffle turnover. The Renegades will recover. Pump fake. Schmidt driving. Um, wanted to pass it to the LAR, Aaron, but I think the LAR is trying to be unbiased and not accept that quaffle, and we'll turn it over to the keeper for the Cougars. Aaron plays for another team. Refing this weekend, Aaron plays chaser keeper for Boom Train. Um, not currently playing right now. They they got some some business to attend to in Louisiana in December, and then I think in January they're going out to California. Jesus, Block City on their own player. I couldn't tell. They're all wearing similar colors. Might get a call. Illegal contact is the call on Edwardsville chaser number 88. Also had a difficult time hearing the, the B calls. Not, not putting that solely on him, having been in that position before, it can be hard to hear calls sometimes. We always encourage the ref crew to make their calls loud and identify specifics. Give me number, color, things like that. There's been a lot of physical type plays this weekend, Matt. Definitely a solid attempt. But the Renegades still maintain bludger control. I, at least I, I think. It's kind of hard to tell. I think Tess has got the, the other bludger behind Lauren, number 50. Yep, she's got it. There's a yellow bludger, a green bludger, and a blue bludger. Schmitty will walk the quaffle up. <laughs> Edwardsville beater gets booped on the head by Tessa. <laughs> Pump fake. Schmitty gets the Lorne. The beater defense is there by number 23. Block City, number 12. They're going to no. With the face boop. And a face beat. Shot is good. Number 12 for Edwardsville. Cutting the gap down to 20. Score is 60-40. Columbia is still up. Game time is 10-40. Beaters for Columbia are Payton and Tessa. 69-57. and 57. Allie kicks it out to Nico. There are no bludgers for the Cougars. Nico getting wrapped up, spinning with authority, spinning, diving, rolling around. Nico gets the buckets for the Renegades, 70-40. Some feedback and conversation between the head ref and the Cougars. Number 15 crosses the midline. The cue is given, the offense is set. We'll see what they do. They do not have bludger control. High pass. Quaffle is overthrown to chaser number 12. The Renegades will walk it up and have bludger control. Payton and Tessa talking out strategy. Payton is number 69 for the running games. Tessa is number 57. Cougars are eagerly, wa eagerly waiting at the midline. Ooh, miss beat by Payton. Payton recovers. Tessa with the beat. 
Schmini with the clear. Pump fake. Miss. Miss opportunity. Cougars recovered a quaffle. Nico steals it. Excellent wolf steal by Nico. Clear. Kicks it out to Alley. The goal is no good. Schmitty slow to get up. The goal is good by SIUE's chaser number 10. Alex is going to get his refs together and have a discussion. Schmitty was a little slow to get up. Quidditch is rough. There's a lot of contact in the sport. They didn't call that good yet, did they? I, I heard the whistle, but Alex now recalling it off. Alec is saying that the goal by SIUE's number 10 is no good. That will be a quaffle turnover for the Renegades. Score remains 70-40. Game time is 13-02. And in case anyone's ever wondering why I'm counting in 10s, that's just how we keep scoring Quidditch. Allie's dunk did look like it go in, but the refs got better eyes there in the mix in the heat of the battle. They're calling it no good. I trust that it's no good. Nico gets beat out. The pressure is brought by SIU beater number five. Mike, uh, Nico getting a blue card for playing after the beat. Maybe he didn't hear the call. It didn't look like he was willfully ignoring it. If that was the case, he might have got a yellow card for that. We'll serve one minute in the penalty box or until the Cougars score. Score is 70 to 40. Edwardsville is down by three scores, but it's still anyone's game. Game time is 13 minutes and 33 seconds. Keeper will start off with the quaffle. Edwardsville has bludgery control. Quaffle turnover recovered by first year player for the Renegades, number seven. Ooh, huge beat by number five. Yep, you guys said it before I could. Melanie, number seven, first year player for the Renegades. Schmitty driving, trying to make something happen before the beat is there, but it gets there. Huge beat by Payne, number 69. My goodness. Columbia maintains bludger control. Edwardsville will walk the quaffle up. Let's see what they do. There was no one guarding that top hoop, and there's a reason for that. Schmidt was playing point defense, and Nico was serving a penalty card. The Renegades did not recognize no one was guarding that hoop. So, fun fact, if you're playing a hoop defense and you got someone in the penalty box that's guarding the middle hoop, there's the gap. Easy score for the Cougars. Score is 70 to 50. Game time just past 15 minute mark. Nico passes to Schmidt. Schmidt being patient, looking, juking, dancing. Pressure, Nico's got the quaffle now. Good beat by number five for Edwardsville. The keeper chugging along. Ooh. Ooh. 
the number five beater for the Cougars is playing hell of a game. Keeper will recover. Schmitty, high pass. Mingo is beat behind the hoops. Number 10 recovers it, gives it to the keeper. Number 15 for Edwardsville. Game time is 16 minutes. Seekers will be reporting, and there is a... There you hear There you can hear it. Columbia will call a timeout at the 16-minute mark. Seekers are going to get ready to report. Snitch will be released at 17 minutes, and the Seekers will be released at 18 minutes. And before I get asked again about how the snitch works, I'll just talk about it since we have a stoppage of play. It looks like our snitch is going to get ready shortly. It's going to be facilitated by Matt Melton, chaser for Boom Train Quidditch, and one of the many excellent head refs that has facilitated the officiating this weekend. Matt Melton resides in northwestern Indiana. Also the founder of Shooty Hoops Quidditch Supplies. Makes some pretty awesome snitch shorts with customized tails. And get this, 3D printed hoops. Mind blowing. But today he's not building Quidditch equipment. He's gonna run around and not get caught. At Scott, least that's the plan. Scotty, what do you think about this meme? <laughs> that's hilarious, I love that so much. Oh God. Wait, why is that? I don't get it. So, Matt Mellon is having too much fun with this, <laughs> okay. but do not let that entertainment fool you. I could show it on the screen. He's actually a pretty solid snitch. Like I, I can see him going to second handicap easily. So for, for next time, I think I'm just going to get a copy-paste description of how the snitch works and just post it each time. <laughs> Quaffles in the hands of the keeper for M. Edwardsville, number 15. High pass, tipped by Nico, recovered by the Renegades. Keeper, ball, Schmitty will walk it up for the Renegades. Edwardsville maintains bludger control. Score is 70 to 50. Schmitty gonna get immediately pressured by the Edwardsville chaser. Picked off! Ooh! Shooters gotta shoot. I love that shot. Do it again. That was a terrible shot. I thought that was a great was shot. Just a bad decision. That was what I mean. I mean uh, yeah. She's about to get beat. That was a hell of a shot. I don't care what the sideline says. Shooters gotta shoot. That was a hell of a shot. If she passes it back, the team retains possession. Matt Melton joins the pitch as the snitch for this contest. Wearing one of his custom snitch shorts and tail made by Shooty Hoops. Get, making sure that they work before he ships them off to the East Coast. Passes. Mel and he gets the score for the Renegades. First year chaser for Columbia. Caroline, right? I think her name's Caroline. Caroline, yeah. The one that just scored? No, her name's Mel, number seven. Oh, Melanie? Okay, oh, sorry. Score is 80, 50. Three, two, one. Seekers release. Snitch range game. Number 23 is there to pressure the Columbia Seeker. Matt Mellon has reversed his hat. That means it's game on. Nico on the charge, oh. gets the score for the Renegades. D 
the implications of that are huge. Taking the game out of snitch range for the Cougars. Is he hiding behind the rest? <laughs> Dramatic beat by number 22. Look to see the Cougars defensive seek until they can get back in range. Miss shot. Melton is having a ball. Miss shot recovered by Columbia. Goal is no good. Score is still out of snitch rain, 90 to 50. That snitch is loving life right now. None. Nico kicks it out to Schmidt. <laughs> Don't know if that jump was necessary, but he seems happy. Score by Columbia Chaser, Lauren, number 50, extending the lead to 50 points. Snitch beat. Just to clarify, snitch is not, you can't beat the snitch. Does, that doesn't work that way. There's a score by Edwardsville caught off camera. Score is 100 to 60. Number 42 for Edwards Deville gets beat out before the score. I don't know where Mellon's gotten all this energy from, but he's running around having a good time. It's the last game of the tournament, so he's, he's emptying the reserves now. I think. Nico gets the score. Stoppage of play. Illegal contact from the Cougars of Edwardsville, which is negated by the goal, which means that they don't have to serve the penalty time. The card is still there. Score is currently 110 to 60. The Renegades are up by five scores. Out of snitch reigns for the Cougars. Cougars need two more quaffle points or quaffle scores to get it back in range and then the catch to send it to overtime. That uh, sounds a little dangerous, Matt, but I appreciate your enthusiasm nonetheless. High pass, block, recovered by the chasers of the Renegades. Bludger fight behind hoops. Found an easier option, thanks to number 23 of the Renegade, or sorry, the Cougars. Meagle gets beat out. More beats, more bludgers flying. Number five is patiently waiting for them to bring up the quaffle. <laughs> This guy is a trip. <laughs> that is Matt Melton, chaser for Boom Trinquage, currently snitching the final bid game here at the Midwest Regional Championship. Schmini kicks it down to Lauren. Beat out behind hooves. Melton is running. The Cougar, Cougars recover to Quaffle, get it past midline. Number 77, looking for lanes. Waiting for the offense to develop. Huge score for the Cougars by their chaser. Number 44. As Devin pointed out, one more score puts this game in range for the Cougars.
Cougar Seeker doing a good job with the defensive seeking. Ooh, a shot attempt by the Cougars off camera just misses the hoops. Game is still out of snitch range, 110 to 70. First handicap for the snitch. Matt Melton won't be able to run as wild as he has been. It's going to be a little bit more linear or linear as he has to stay within a meter and a half of the midline. Passes to Mel. M Mel pump fakes, gives it to David. David pump fake, juking, spinning. Bobbles the quaffle in the hands of the keeper, number 77 for the Cougars. Will slow walk it up. Columbia Seeker has not had a lot of opportunities at the snitch, and a lot of it has to do with this player right here, number 23, the beater for Edwardsville. Hell of a game by her. Wish I had a roster sheet. Amanda Walker, everyone. Thank you, Amanda Walker. That would make sense because I, I think like her dad or like family member has been like commenting all day. <laughs> so that I saw the last name, I recognized it. So that is number 23, Amanda Walker. I'm not even on the field. <laughs> You're the best AR just off the field. High toss, blocked by Nico. Recovered by 27 of Edwardsville. She's gonna turtle it. Turtle it more or less does what it looks like. She's gonna turn into a turtle over to Quaffle and protect it until we get some beater help. Had a little discussion. Quaffle is turned over to the Renegades keeper, number 20, or not number 20, number two, Schmitty. Game time is 24 52. Score is 110 to 70. Matt still has a nice hat. High pass. Goal is no good. Recovered by Edwardsville. This dude is a charging hell of a score by 44 chaser for the cougars stoppage of play game time is 25 18 score is 110 to 80. as stated previously the snitch is worth 30 points if edwardsville catches They put this in overtime. If Columbia catches, they seal the deal and claim the final bid to Nationals next year. It looks like there was a timeout called. I wasn't paying attention who called it. But both teams are huddling up. Like we said earlier, folks, this was going to be a close. And the final bid from the Midwest region is on the line, and these two teams do not want to go home without it. Score is 110 to 80, just over 25 minutes here. The first handicap is implemented, and yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I'm hungry. <laughs> I. We're gonna turn this way for a bit. I know his, his, I know he didn't get the championship win, but huge shout out to Curtis, head coach of Creighton Quidditch. Hey Curtis, wait. Head coach of Creighton Quidditch, um, has done a phenomenal job connecting the resources and time and energy making this regional happen. Phenomenal facilities here. We got indoor pitches, unheard of, with a scoreboard and lights. The competition alone is lit, but like we literally got lights. That is awesome. And for us in the Midwest, when a lot of our games are either played in the rain and the mud or the cold or otherwise, it was nice to have this option, even though we didn't really need it that much this weekend. And the outdoor fields, also turf with lights. So shout out to Creighton, shout out to Curtis. Hell of a facility. Looking forward to being here next year for regionals. Yeah. 
Goal is good by Edwardsville. Only down by 20. Scores 110 to 90. Game time is 26.02. Columbia regains bludger control. Jersey Paul snitches down. Goal is no good. Quaffle's still up. You can't beat off pitch. Hayden letting his team know they have none, as no bludgers. Taking this game out of snitch range is Smitty again for the Renegades, number two, their keeper. Thank you for clarifying. It's still in snitch range, and even more so because their keeper for the Cougars, number 77, gets another score. The score is closed in by two, 120 to 100. Still anyone's game here, guys. This national bid means the world to these teams. This would be a return to nationals for Edwardsville. Woo! David, number 97, getting the buckets for the Renegades. A win for Edwardsville would be a return to nationals. A win for Columbia would be their first ever invitation. Edwardsville answers back, and we got a player down for the Renegades. It looks like it's Nico. And stoppage of play while we get medical attention for Nico, who is struggling to get up right now. Let's go ahead and everybody. We are doing good over here. There are 40. Sorry, no, that's a game. That's a lifetime. We got 37 people watching comfort of their own home or in excellent, Katie's case the airport <laughs> um hopefully she's there by now she how are you feeling fun. right now a little tired uh SAUE guy real fast uh, you don't say yeah yeah my best move is running away and he negates my best move because he's twice as fast oh so yeah what, what's been helping you be successful out there solid beating by both teams yeah, I try to avoid that at all costs, so I'm sorry. We can't, we're not compatible. Like, just swipe me left. I'm sorry. No, solid beater play, actually. They're doing a very good job of keeping the sneakers off me. Uh, it's been lovely. Number 23, especially from Edwardsville, been keeping the pressure on. Uh, thank you yep. for being here, by the way. Any time is great, great coming here. This place is awesome. Like, uh, they have like yes. eight more pitches out there. Nationals, boom, done. <laughs> done deal. Done. You heard it here it. first. I love it. Uh, Eight pitches. Wow, that's, that's something. Yeah. Something about three. Pitches, I still actually. didn't hear from that place you, you sent me. Like, they are the hardest facility to get a hold of back home. You could squeeze two pitches in But yes, just to clarify, Peachy is not going to play for this match. Yeah, I've never. It sounds like. Maybe once. Well, I, I don't want to make okay. assumptions. He's just in a hoodie and sweatpants, just chilling on the sidelines. That doesn't make. I don't think it's. I think it makes. Stoppage of play here. Oh. Scores 130 nice. to 110. Right, Game water. time it's is. Like... You're welcome, Matt. Nico is able to walk off. Doesn't appear to need any more medical attention. Will rejoin his team on the sidelines. Melton getting some water. Game time is 27 minutes and 47 seconds. That means second handicap is to come shortly, which will involve Matt taking away one of his arms. It's still attached to his body. He just can't really use it. You never know. Some people might take that really literally. Hey, Matt, 13 seconds. As Mark stated, and no, tr no truer words have ever been spoken, fire is hot. Fire hot. Schmitty will walk the quaffle up for the Renegades. Payne, beat, clear beat, gets beat out. Columbia's got bludger control. 
what looks like a clean catch by the Cougars. They're going to talk it out. Matt shrugging. His body language does not look good. Not good in a sense that, like, kind of wants that one back, but we'll see what the rest have to say. If the catch is good by Edwardsville, they win the final bid. An absolute stunner of a game. Not that SIUE was not capable of getting this bid, but so much potential and growth from this Columbia team. Heartbroken, not securing that last bid. They go home empty-handed, but they have performed phenomenally for their second appearance in the Midwest region. This is an up-and-coming team, young, got some confidence growing. Look for these guys next year to continue to shock the world in the Midwest. But for now, all eyes are on the Cougars from SIUE, stealing that last bid. Final score, 140 to 130. Seven teams have claimed the last bids from the Midwest region going to Nationals next year. April 2020, West Virginia. Huge shout out to, what's the name of this town again? Papillon? Oh. Omaha. It's yeah, Papillon. Papillon is the hometown of this facility. It's 15 minutes outside of Omaha, Nebraska. Oh. Veteran X chaser for the Cougars, Hannah Miller, now Chicago United player, gonna go celebrate with her old team. Hell of a game, hell of a finish. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for providing feedback and making this enjoyable for us here. Stellar performances across the board. Best of luck with the remainder of the season for all teams. Looking forward to seeing more Quidditch and the big stage, West Virginia next year, April. Also thank you US Quidditch for facilitating all the regionals um, this season. And yeah, this is Scott Ryan from Chicago United. Gonna clock out and get my butt back home to Chicago. We got what, seven hour drive? Yep, we do. Eight. Going to Lenox and then to the Oh yeah, we gotta go to New Lenox and then, then back to Chicago. So I don't know what time it is now, but we're not getting home anytime soon. Thank you guys. Y'all get home safe and have, as one of my favorite quiz players would say, Jeff Sywick. Have wonderful dreams. Take care. Bye-bye.